Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create musical instrument multi sampling in Reaper. Now, the idea of musical instrument multi sampling is using the sampler that's built into Reaper for playing back musical instruments, as opposed to drums or sample effects, where we can create pitched instruments from samples. So let's give it a shot. I have a track over here where the input is set up to my MIDI keyboard, monitoring is turned on, and it's in record. So if I play my keyboard, I should see input on this track. And we do. So now let's put a plugin on this track. We'll go down here to Instruments and choose the plugin that comes with Reaper called Resamplematic 5000. Double click it, and it puts that plugin on that track. Now we're not going to hear anything yet. We need to put a sample into this plugin. Now typically it would be a drum sound, so it wouldn't be pitched, but in this video we're going to use pitch sounds. So let's go to our directory, which is the Explorer on PC or the Finder on Mac, and find some samples. I have some one-shot samples over here, and they sound like this. Let's try this one. So we'll drag this in to this window right here, and we can play it with our keyboard right away. But if you notice, the pitch doesn't change when I go up and down the keyboard. It plays the same pitch no matter what. We could change that by changing the mode right here. Let's switch it to note semitone shifted. Now if I play the keyboard with different notes, we hear different pitches. Also, every note is the same volume. If you want to change that and make it velocity sensitive, take the minimum volume and bring it all the way down. So if I play the keyboard soft, it's quieter. Play it harder, it's louder. So now it's velocity sensitive. We can adjust the volume of the sound right from here. Let's bring it down a bit. And we also want to change the option down here. Obey note offs. Right now when we play it, it plays the whole sample no matter what, whether we hold it down or not. If we choose this, it only plays the sample when we hold down the key. If we let go, it'll be shorter. Longer or shorter. Which makes more sense for musical sound or a sound with pitch. I'm also noticing it's a bit short at the end. We can make that sound longer or hold out by adjusting the release. Let's make it a bit longer. And now it'll hold out even if we let go of the key. Making it sound more natural in the release. Or longer if we hold it down. Now that the sample has a pitch, we can play a melody on this track. Let's close this and go into record and play a melody on this track. Hear it back. And just like that, we made a one shot sample musical, or we could play a melody on it with different pitches for different keys. But we can get more complicated with it using multi samples, which is the idea of having different samples on each key, or a small range of keys, making it sound more natural as you go up and down the keyboard. Like if we play really high, it doesn't sound right. 
or really low, because the note is stretching too far. So for this sound, it sounds pretty good in a short range, but not much wider than that. So let's create a different sound using multi samples, which is different samples for each note or a limited range of notes. Let's go to this track, go to the effects on it, add the plugin to this track, resample Matic 5000, and this time we'll add samples for a Mellotron flute. I downloaded a few right here, and they're already set up with different notes. C3, C4, so we could put each note on their own key, and it'll sound more natural up and down the keyboard. So let's start off with the lowest note, the G2, and let's drag it in right here. Again, we can play it on our keyboard, but it's not going to change pitch unless we change the mode right here to note semitone shifted. And let's turn on obey note offs. It'll sound like this. <laughs> Now, Mellotrons tend to be very short at the end, but let's raise the release just a bit so it sounds more natural without a click at the end. That sounds better. Let's bring the volume down a bit. And we could also adjust the attack if we don't want the sound to be too clicky. It'll fade in a bit. Make it more legato. We'll make it quick, like this. Let's leave that there. And now let's set up the notes so they correspond with our keyboard. So the note start is going to be G2, which is the number 43. So now it's going to start on G2. So if I play lower than G2, we don't hear the sound because it starts at G2. But the note's too low because this plugin defaults to minus 69. Let's switch this to zero. And then G2 will actually play G2. And again, if we go lower, it doesn't play. But right now, we can go as high as G9. And it's also going to play. But it doesn't sound very good. So let's limit it up to the next sample that we're going to bring in, which we see over here is C3. So let's change this to 47, which is a B2 right before that C3. So now we're only going to hear from G2 to B2. When we hit the C, it doesn't play. We're going to add in a new sample for C3. So go over here to C3, but don't drag it in yet. First, we're going to copy this plugin and then paste it to duplicate it. Then for the second one, we'll drag in C3. And that'll duplicate all the parameters from the first sample to the second sample. But we want to change the note start and the note end. We'll change this to 48, which is C3, and 54, which is F sharp 3, because the next note over here is the G3. So we're not going to go into that range. But now if we play the keyboard in this area, it plays the new sample. Let's compare the first sample going in to the second sample. It's a little bit different, but we can readjust that with our volume if we want to, making it lower or louder to match. It's a bit low, so let's bring it up. That sounds better. So now we have two samples that are going to play back when we go up and down our keyboard. Let's do the same thing for the third note. Copy this one and paste it. And instead of dragging it in from here, 
one of the nice things about this plugin is if all the samples are in the same folder, we can find them right here. So we can switch it to G3 right from this drop down menu. Then we change the notes. It's going to start on G3, which is 55, and go up to 59, which is B3, which again is right before our C4 sample, which is the next sample. So now let's play what we have. And then it stops before C4. So let's copy and paste it again. Switch this to 60, which is C4, to 66, which is F sharp 4. And change this to C4. Let's do one more. Copy, paste, and switch this to G4. Change the numbers, 67. And I'm going to go a bit higher for the note end to 72. So we could use the C5, which sounds like this. Which is probably the highest note that we need. So now let's hear them all. So now we can create melodies with these notes. Or even play chords. Or melodies over chords. And just like that, we created a preset or a multi sampled musical instrument that we could recall at any point. So if we want to save this, just go right here and right click, go to Effects Chains, and save all effects as a chain. We'll give it a name, Mellotron Flute, and save it. And now at any point, let's delete it from this track. We want to use that sound on this track. Just right click, go to the effects chains, and choose that preset. And it opens up with all those samples already set up on our keyboard. And just like that, we've created a multi sampled musical instrument, which we could use in any of our productions or songs that we want. So that's pretty much it. That's creating a musical instrument using multi sampling in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!